In a previous video called Google Cloud Platform Storage Bucket with Terraform in 8 minutes, we deployed the two resources you see in front of you, a storage bucket and a storage bucket object. I'll leave a link to that video somewhere here on the screen, uh, but that wasn't the most secure way to do things. In this video, I'm going to go over how to use Terraform to secure your Google storage bucket and storage bucket objects. Because drawing comparisons between which Terraform resource and the attributes of that resource correspond to which UI element in the Google Cloud Console can be a little confusing. So I'll try to break that down for you the best I can. So one of the first things we do when we create a Google storage bucket is we want to decide should the contents of this bucket be public to the internet? Um, and often the answer is no. So in the last video, I had you delete an attribute that came from the example we copied called public access prevention, and that was set to enforce. Because we deleted it, it automatically got set to what's called inherited. So if I go and look at that bucket, and I look at the permissions, we can see that uh, for public access, it says subject to the object ACLs. People will be allowed to make any object within here uh, public, and that's bad for us, right? If I were to go ahead and go to this object here and add an edit access, I could go ahead and set this to public for all users, and that would be bad. And now it says public to internet. Now that doesn't mean that every object within this bucket will be public to the internet. If I added another one, I could keep that one private. It just means that objects within my bucket are allowed to be made public. So if I were to go back to my Terraform code and set this to enforce, and then run a Terraform apply, so we can see now that when my Terraform reply has been completed, the public access is set to not public. And it says objects cannot be publicly shared over the internet. So if I were to go to my object now, we can see that it says not public. I'll go ahead to edit access. We can see that this is still here. So this did not get removed. Um, but if I were to go ahead and try and add a new public entry and hit save, we can see that the member bindings, all users and are not allowed since public access prevention is enforced. So I can no longer go into my bucket and make any of my objects public. So just to recap, the Google storage bucket attribute public access prevention is the equivalent of the Google storage UI element public access. If you have it set to enforced, then no public access is allowed. If you have it set to inherited, public access is allowed based on the object permissions. Next, we want to start talking about who can actually edit this bucket or the objects within the bucket or access them. Um, and that comes down to what's called access control. So this block here, access control, it can be fine grained or it can be uniform. If it's fine grained, then every object has its own ACL and permissions. But if we switch to uniform, then the bucket level access control is just applied uniformly through every object within that bucket. So if I come back to my Terraform code under the Google storage bucket uh, resource, if I type the attribute uniform bucket level access, I can set this to false or true. If I set it to false, then we get that uh, no uniform access and then access is just controlled on each object level. If I set this to true, then uniform access is enabled on the bucket. So I'll save, I'll run a Terraform apply, and I'll refresh the page and we'll watch access control go from fine grained to uniform. So now uniform, uh, no object level ACL is enabled. So whatever permissions we set on the bucket, uh, those will apply to all the objects within the bucket as well. So now we're ready to start controlling who actually has control over our bucket and our objects within that bucket. So let's go to the Terraform documentation and you'll see we've got a lot of resources here. So we've got bucket access control and bucket ACL. And it's worth noting we can only use access control resources when uniform access is not enabled. When uniform access is enabled, we have to control access to the bucket through IAM. So for this example, I'm not going to be using any custom written policies. I'm just going to be using a default role. So I'm going to copy the example under the Google Storage Bucket IAM resource called Google Storage Bucket IAM Binding. I'm going to come back to my code and I'm going to paste that in there. I'm going to make sure my bucket is referencing my bucket resource name. I'm going to give a user storage.admin access 
And then we keep user colon, but we have to put a valid user email address here. So I'll add mine here. Awesome. And I'll go ahead and I'll run a Terraform apply. We should get an error. And I want you to see this error. So the error says, when reading and editing the storage bucket object GCP logo, 403 access denied. So what does this mean exactly? We're not trying to edit our object in our bucket. Well, what Terraform is trying to do is it's trying to read all the properties of the object in the bucket because we have that object specified as a resource in our state file. And Terraform needs to make sure that how that object is configured matches how we have it configured so it can decide if it needs to make a change to that object. But Terraform can't read it because we switched the bucket to uniform access control. And the user we're authenticating with when we run Terraform apply, the user we logged in with using the gcloud CLI is not on this list here. We don't have permissions to edit objects in this bucket. So to fix that real quick, I'm just going to go ahead and grant the user that I am authenticated with when I run Terraform apply. I'm going to give them the admin role. Awesome. So my principles there, I'll come back here and I'll run a Terraform apply again. And we can see now we're allowed to read the object in the bucket and our binding is created. So now if I come back to my bucket and I look at my principal list, I've got a new principal added and it's that user with the admin permissions because that is what we specified. But you'll notice the user I added earlier is no longer on this list. So if we look at the Terraform documentation, the Google Storage Bucket IAM binding resource is authoritative. So what that means is if I change this list, it changes the entire permission set on the bucket. Right? If I wanted to specify multiple permissions, I would need to add all of those users here under members as a list. So now, because the user that I'm trying to authenticate with when I run Terraform apply is not on here, let's run a Terraform apply and see what happens. And you can see, again, I don't have the ability to manage this object, so I can't read it. Terraform can't read it to compare it to the state. So I now would have to go back into my bucket and add permissions again. So it's important to make sure that the user you're authenticating to Google Cloud with when you're in Terraform apply is pre-granted access to manage the bucket when you have uniform access control on and also is in your list of members that you would like to access the bucket. Otherwise, you'll only be able to manage that bucket with Terraform apply one time and then each time after you'll have to keep adding the user to the list. So I went ahead and gave myself permissions on the bucket so I can manage it real quick. I'm actually gonna go ahead and delete this resource now. We don't need the IAM binding anymore because we're gonna change uniform access level to false. So we'll move to fine-grained access control. I'll run a Terraform apply. Back in my bucket, now that I've deleted that IAM resource, you can see we're clear here. We're back to default principles and we're at fine-grained access control. So how do we manage access now? Well, now we can start using the storage bucket access control resource or the storage bucket ACL resource. And then if we wanted to manage individual object permissions, we could do storage object access control or storage object ACL. So what's the difference between access control and ACL? Well, in the documentation, they call that out. They say, if you wanna manage the ACL authoritatively, use the storage bucket ACL, this one. And then that one says, if you wanna manage it not authoritatively, use storage bucket access control. So what does authoritative mean versus not authoritative? All that means is if you were to use the authoritative ACL resource, then what it, whenever you do an apply, it's going to remove everything attached to it except for what you define in this resource, right? So here on ACL resource, you can define multiple role entities in one resource and everything not defined will be removed. Access control is not authoritative, meaning you can only define one entity in the resource. If you wanted multiple entities, you'd have to create multiple resources, but it won't delete everything that you don't specify. 
So that's the difference between authoritative and non-authoritative here. So I'm gonna start with storage bucket access control. I'm gonna copy the first half of this example here. I'm gonna paste that into my code. I'm gonna make sure my bucket name matches here. I'll do reader. And for entity, we wanna do a specific user. So I'll do user dash and then a valid user email address pseudo user 1001 at gmail.com all right i'll go ahead and i will run a terraform apply i'll go ahead and hit yes and now if i come over to my bucket we can see that that user has been added as a principal with the reader permissions to this bucket so if i were to hit edit i can see i have storage bucket reader now if i come back over the documentation it is very important that you do not use an access control resource and an ACL resource together. And they both say that. They both say, do not use these two resources in conjunction to manage the same bucket. Because one is authoritative and one is not authoritative, you will run into issues if you attempt to use both of these resources on the same bucket. And then I'll come back to my code and I want to remove that user, so I'll just go ahead and delete that resource. I'll do a Terraform apply. I'll come back over to my bucket, and we can see that that user is no longer there. I'm not going to go over the storage bucket ACL because it's the same as access control. If you were to just copy uh, this part right here, Google bucket access control list, you would, again, define a role entity or a list. You would just define a list of role entities instead of a single entity. So now that we've gone over bucket, level permissions, access control list. Uh, let's go over object level. So each object can have its own access control within it as well. And that would be the equivalent to editing the edit access button here um, within the object, right? So if we go to the Terraform registry, look at the documentation, uh, similar to what we just went over, storage bucket access control and storage bucket ACL, we have object access control and object ACL. Again, one is authoritative, one's non-authoritative. So if we look at object access control, we can see here that we define which object we wanna uh, edit our access control on, which bucket that object is within, and then the entity and the role that we would like to grant that entity. And this is just for one entity, right? So non-authoritative, if you were to add this, it wouldn't delete whatever exists there already. Uh, authoritative, our ACL, and this is so we can define multiple entities, right? So storage object ACL uh, in a list. So we'll just define each entity, their role and, and the user or group in a list. And this is authoritative. So anything not in here will be removed from our access controls every time we run Terraform apply. I'm not gonna go over the Terraform code for that because it's extremely similar to what we just went over for the bucket level. So you should now be well versed to start securing your Google storage buckets, deciding whether or not you want public access enabled, deciding if you want uniform access control over the entire bucket or more fine grain access control over each individual object, how to add those permissions via IAM, how to add those permissions uh, via access control lists to the bucket and the same for objects.